Frog. Pigeons 420. Mr. Grow It. From the stack. Unlock the potential of your grow space with the AC Infinity Controller 69 Pro or the Controller 69 Pro Plus, your ultimate partner in precision environmental management. This state of the art controller allows you to manage up to four devices or eight if you have the 69 Pro Plus independently, adjusting for temperature, humidity, and VPD with dynamic precision. Experience seamless integration and control from anywhere using the AC Infinity app thanks to its advanced Wi Fi and Bluetooth features. Elevate your growing conditions to perfection with the customizable schedules and the real time monitoring. The Controller 69 Pro, where technology meets cultivation. Explore more at acinfinity.com or find it on Amazon. And use discount code THESTASH15 at checkout. Are you a grower? Are you tired of lugging around too many bottles? Is it too expensive? Is it so confusing? Tired of reading feed charts? Well, guess what? There is an easier way. Introducing the Stash Blend. You can now get your bag of Stash Blend premium additives that you can add to your garden using just about any base nutrients. Go to stashblend.com and get your order today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back to Winnipeg. Good to see you guys. In Canada. In person. Canada. That we're in Winnipeg, but welcome, boys. We are welcome pretty close. We are pretty close. We're visiting Rob's studios. It's been a long time. I haven't seen Rob in Canada in a long time. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'm glad to, that we're here together. I'm happy you guys are here as well. Profecta. <laughs> now, uh, now that I have you guys here, I really want to do this obstacle course thing we've been talking about oh. for a while. I do think that collectively is three strong independent men along with Wink will help guide us. Uh, I don't think, honestly, I brought the gear for it. These are my shoes. I brought shoes for fashion. Literally You're going to want bare feet, baby. And I forgot my flip-flops. Hmm. You're going to want bare feet. That's all you need. This is I like, had a whole bag of like good stuff like that packed up, and then I didn't. I totally forgot that I didn't pack my camera the day before we left, so I had to unpack everything. Because I've been doing the damn live stream for Growers Gauntlet, so it made it so it was tough for me. So now, now I'm to the point now in my swimming career where these are day shorts, these are night shorts, but they're also swim trunks. Mm -hmm. So and I'm going swimming tomorrow. And we're going, going swimming, swimming baby. a couple of days from now. I'll take, yeah. I'll take these. You know? Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So get this: at the beach, there is a inflatable, or sorry, there is an inflatable obstacle course, and it's over the water. So it's essentially like, did you, get, did you ever watch Wipeout? Like the no. game show? Mm -mm. Oh, gosh. Did you ever? Oh, it's a Canadian thing. No way. No way. I don't think it is because there's a Wipeout Canada. MXC. So actually, MXC. I was thinking the same thing, man. <laughs> yeah, MXC. Yeah, yeah. MXC. MXC was amazing. Yeah, we used to, yeah. we used to have that here as well. Uh, but essentially, I know that, I know that uh, Wipeout was in America because there's a Wipeout Canada. But... Um, Essentially, it is an obstacle course over water. You got to jump over some balls. You got to jump over some uh, bunky bars. You got to get from platform to platform, and it is a lot of fun. And it, especially when the heat is it, like it's it's warm up here. We've we've talked about that in the weeks before. It is warm up here, and you have to be able to enjoy a little bit of time on the beach if you're going to just enjoy your time up here. And this inflatable obstacle course, which is going to happen in I think tomorrow or something, is going to be amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait either. Is it anything to be concerned about? Potential injuries going to happen if we're yeah. not careful? We need to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially if Wink's participating, we're going to make sure that we're not jumping over anything and landing on rocks on the other <laughs> side. Uh, no, you're going to want to make sure, A, you wear a lot of sunscreen. You'll know that from Nevada. Yep. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you got a Michigan, life. Michigan, we get burnt too. Thank you. You do have sun out there? Yes. Okay. So waiting on Wi-Fi, <laughs> but they have sun. And that's important. Well, the Wi-Fi is coming in soon. It is. It might Elon, be, by the Elon time you guys are watching UFO this things. in Michigan, you might actually have Wi-Fi now. It's so good. I don't want to discriminate. <laughs> but you're definitely going to want to have a Fiber life ethics. jacket. Life jacket as well, oh, baby, because you're going to be exhausted. I'm and when you fall in the water, you're like... That. Life jacket. Brother, I'm from <sighs> the great freaking lake. Well, said every man that drowned life. days before. I, I, I'm baffled by that. <laughs> what you're against life jackets i'm huh? against life jackets i think they what? will kill you i think you'll die without a life jacket i completely agree <laughs> i'm a better swimmer i'm a better swimmer uh i'm a terrible swimmer I i'm actually, a great swimmer but i'm I was a still great amazing swimmer i went, had swim classes from five to six aren't you jewish 
Yeah. Juice can swim. Juice can swim. Dude, we parted the fucking sea, brother. Okay. We, we parted okay. the sea. One time. <laughs> One we, time they part the sea, and here we know. I'm uh, just saying, we're, we know our water. <laughs> And I'm good with the water, but Jeez, Michigan I've had a few more me. than one bad situation. I don't want to make this, take this dark, but uh, yeah, I life jacket for me. <laughs> He's like, I are three of my best friends died. The thing, but the thing is, is like, it's like, no. yeah, I can swim great too, but man, you can't est- you cannot, you cannot like account for panic. That's a myth. Panic. <laughs> Doesn't happen to real <laughs> it doesn't men. Doesn't happen to men from America. When you hit the water, depending on the situation, whether it's cold, whether you were, were tubing and you got in, like you wiped out or whatever, mm-hmm. panic is an incredible America. thing. And when you start to panic, it, oh man, swimming goes out the window. You start that's, start to yeah, hyperventilate. The panic is the, that that's you're you're not wrong about that. We flipped my I buddy and panic. I flipped a canoe. We were we were drinking some wobbly pops, and we were in the canoe and we, f- we it flipped. And at the moment we hit the water, we could not stop laughing. We laughed like it was it was hysterical. It was unfortunate because it was it was hindering our ability to survive. And we were like, ah, and we're, di- we're, we're we're drowning. We're dying. Thankfully, this boat came and saved our lives. But hell of a time, though. Right? Hell of a time hell that I had to share about with my friends. <laughs> eh? We so made no. it out. We uh, made it out. That was the last time we were panic out. Panic is a crazy <laughs> thing, and I don't think it's a myth. I honestly don't. So well, we're going to a beach. Yeah, you have to wear a life jacket at a beach. Not at the <laughs> we're beach. Be grown ass. <laughs> it's like wait, wait, what? Not, not at the, the beach. beach. Okay, right. Nope, not <laughs> wait, at the beach. Wait, Just when you use this obstacle course. Okay. Understood. Oh, yeah. Floaties. Yeah, I actually, I actually <laughs> think <laughs> they distribute floaties for everybody. I, I've got him a breast floaty. <laughs> Three. He's got like the little ones on his arms. Four grown ass men just wearing floaties <laughs> and shit at the beach with our nose all white. It's gonna be a fun time. Well, it's gonna be a fun like time. we didn't catch an eye. The, the, Where are the cops are like, keep an eye on them. <laughs> yeah, oh, but that's uh, that's something that uh, you know, uh, life jackets can be underestimated, and often a myth Absolute is that myth. even the great sl- swimmers don't need a life jacket. But that's just not true. <laughs> what you're saying <laughs> okay? is a myth. that's just not, and that true. makes me want to talk more about myths. Please do. Well, let's change the subject to gardening myths. How about well, that? Oh, okay. I was going to talk about Bigfoot, but yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I think, I think yeah, Bigfoot's not a myth. Too. Gardening, too. Uh, on the moon, but mainly gardening, primarily. I think when it comes to myths, it, things that people just say, you just got to do it. doesn't matter how you feel. This is what it is. There's some things that honestly have been debunked over the years that are myths that don't necessarily have validity to them. Even when you want to look into something as more recent as autoflowers, you know how many times I've been told by people that you can't train autoflowers, don't top autoflowers, even like you can't clone an autoflower. Technically, technically you can. Will it be an autoflower still? Maybe not. Yeah, it'll root. It'll, it'll root. root. Yep. It, it'll, yep. It'll automatically flower the second it roots, and those roots touch anything worth of anything. So, Yeah, how much that plant actually grows up and stretches and produces is, oh, yeah, that's and not. I've had people who didn't have the autoflower trait come from the, the cut, too, where they're like, damn, it's still vegging. Oh, it's still vegging for some reason. What's going on? It's like they had to flip 12-12, and then it did. So it's the same thing that goes into topping, topping auto flowers. People say you can't do it. It's not allowed to be done. And it's more of a myth. Again, if you have a large enough container and you're able to have that plant still grow enough time, it's going to be able to recover and still be a big beast with topping. Yeah, you can. I, you know, I think there's also it's people saying you can't do it versus people who say, who should really be saying you shouldn't do it, you know, not that you can't do it. And it's like a top topping autoflow is one of those things, right? So like you can do it and the plant will recover and be just fine, but should you do it? Well, it could potentially impact yield. Now there are a ton of people out there that are going to debate me in the comment section. And they say, I top every one of my autos and uh, I have a great yield and it doesn't impact growth at all. Uh, but you got other people on the other side that you know say don't top it because it will negatively impact the plant to where you're going to have a reduced yield uh, versus you know topping versus on topping. I like your hat. I like yours. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. buddy. I just want to mention little that. twinsies here for yeah. those. those are in the <laughs> twinsies, boy. Listening on the audio platforms, we both got the AC Infinity, AC Infinity hat. that you won't find anywhere else. Yeah, One because time I drops, don't. Baby. They want to do this to me. Yep. They sorry. want. They sorry. Who are they, you? They conspired against sorry. me because they can knew I had. Down. Keep it down. How can you pack multiple hats in a suitcase? The uh, multiples, multiples. Same way I packed multiple <laughs> shoes, boy. How do you do this? 
Uh, mine, it might get messed up, so I decided not to do it. And I think I it's a, a myth. I take a regulated airplane suitcase, and I put a ton of stuff in that. I also had a military roll my clothes, so my shirts take up no more than like six centimeter or six inches by like two inches each. Shirt. Right, I military rolled my clothes, but I had a box of Rellos allegedly that had to make it here, brother. Yeah, but you want to know what's even better, David Blaine? I made that shit disappear. Hey, no, I didn't smoke many of them. But what I'm saying is that uh, when it comes to, I did. When it comes to autos, though, uh, there are a number of myths. And as someone who doesn't, I don't believe in autos. I don't think it's worth your time. There's a place. However, think they're real. They don't exist. The thing is, is that, yeah, you should top your auto. If you're going to grow an auto, top an auto. I, that's something that goes hand in hand for me. And uh, that's the thing about myths is I feel like we're going through this evolution of time where we are starting to see a lot of these myths start to get debunked and we're starting to see now that with the right conditions you can actually perform a lot of these myths um have you ever heard of the myth that you can't the depository you ever say you ever <laughs> <did a> depository <laughs> no, he's gonna do it i didn't know where you were going with that no, it was a long were, pause there I, it was a long pause because i was like do we talk about hooping things or no but if you've ever heard of uh whether the effect of uh, if you put herb up up your bottom up behind. your bottom up your behind that it's you depository that you can get a very positive effect from yeah that. here tooting and booting it yeah you're boofing well i can say from personal experience that <laughs> I have no idea, but we were speaking with somebody earlier today who allegedly was quite, who has an idea, quite adamant <laughs> that if you had no a, idea, that advocate, that you're, if you're <laughs> trying an advocate for a booty boof, if you're trying to take care of the uh, H roids, if you got the hemis, if you got the hemis, or if you're looking to experience have a good old time on experience the, weekend, the uh, potentials or the opportunities <laughs> of this plant at its finest, uh, hoop it. You give it a I like yeah, that. Yeah, you gotta put a little Hebrew huck. into it. Hoop it. Hook. Hook. No, no, it's different. Not a huck to it. No, it's mm. a hoop to it. Hoop, hoop, <laughs> yeah, Turns out that that is a that's a myth uh, that was debunked. Uh, debunked this afternoon. Wasn't necessarily growing and be harvesting, but that was <laughs> yeah. So you can hoop uh, your medication. It's gonna work great and take care of your roids. That's a myth. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys experienced that. Chris, any personal experience? <laughs> you really <laughs> want to know, huh? <laughs> we found really, out. really trying to dig into the details of my personal He's experience like with that? Gritty. With, with that, that of all things, <laughs> there could be good stuff, and there's, that's the one you want? Well, for the record, no, I haven't uh, I haven't tried that out. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to get I'm your experience. I'm not that adventurous. <laughs> it's okay. It'll come. He's Rob, like, what do you, you know think? What it's a, it's a de- next generation. <laughs> Generation above I don't think and it's below the ours. Ne- yeah, it's not the next generation. <laughs> That's the generation behind. But boy. a couple of generations behind and a couple of generations. But, uh, he was honest. He was being very honest. We're joking. We're being comedic about it. But the reality is, is that uh, he was very facetious. serious. Yep, we were being facetious. But now we're being honest in, rea- in the regards <laughs> that uh, you know he was honest with us and he stated that you know if you are trying he to care, take care of this. He showed us. He did not show us. I don't know what room you were in, Rob, with him. Uh, I thought we were together the he whole time. He didn't show us. He might have showed you in a different wait, room. Wait, wait. We, we missed we, that. He did not. So, uh, yeah, you can enjoy a uh, very positive experience from uh, hooping your medication, and it does take care of your roids. And when it comes to gardening. Rob got a step-by-step tutorial on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was an eight-minute quick tutorial. No, it wasn't sponsored. Quick. wasn't sponsored by anybody. Didn't to watch Today's video is brought to you by AC Infinity. <laughs> He got shows up. with your hats, give up any sort of thing. So I don't know. It was a decent time. I think. <laughs> I, think to go, pivot. Pivot. I think going into the the uh, the myths that a that lot was of four minutes, to, boys. That was four minutes of hooping your medication. <laughs> I mean, Sorry. honestly, that's go gonna ahead. be a clip. It's gonna be a clip worthy. Let us know in the comment section if you've done it. But another myth that I've noticed, a myth, is people will say you get better terps from. Dry, or from drying your bud before you trim it. So from trimming dry. Is there any science to back that at all? I've never heard of that before. You've never heard that? No. You want to make sure that you trim it when it's wet, wet trimming, more terps. Mm. You're preserving. Basically, you're getting but a slower dry. Fresh frozen if they trim it and then freezing it right away to try to conserve things. Or It's the same concept. It's essentially you're trying to preserve the slow, the slow burn of your terpenes. But there's no science at all to back it. Myself, I recently ran into some stuff that had almost no leaves after my default. Like it was pretty much just ready to smoke, and it looked it looked like your the chill out OG in the sense of it's just triked out, triked out uh, fan leaves, a little bit of fan leaves. So I left it, and that by itself was fire, no difference. I trimmed all the stuff off, 
versus the donut strip Lloyd. It was this, they're both donuts. One of them was beautiful looking, not necessarily like a, a terp that stood out, but there was a terp. One of them had no terps at all. And the one that had no terps at all, I totally dry or slow cured. I let that just sit there, wet, full plant, hang upside down. It was about 12 days ballpark of drying. Both the same plants, one of them just being left alone, one of them a slow dry. There was no actual science that I've seen to say that drying your plants and then trimming it will do anything versus trimming it when it's wet. Bro science. Myth. That's crazy. Yeah. And that's my side by side. So it's a little bit of like somewhat controlled. But the main thing is, is like when people will say that there's the only way you're going to get the best terps, organic, putting your plant, whole plant, cut upside down. You know how many people I know who will cut their buds off whole? Tons of people. Like majority of people. That's why they have trim trays. Those aren't whole, pl- not trim trays, the trim racks. Like the multi-stage trim racks. I feel like a lot of it is just bro science and just us using that same thing well if you think about it it's just like a slower it's like well yeah if you think about it there's a lot of shit you can try to make sense to with the human brain but it doesn't necessarily mean it's logical you know bro science lives on holds the trikes on i could see that well and i could see that but then you're going to be well and yeah what? And then if you pick we, up nobody so, can hear wink. so wink was saying that to him it essentially holds your trikes on so again, but this is all subjective bro science. That's my that's my biggest thing is I feel like a lot of myths until we get some science to go with it, it's subjective in that sense because it's the same thing as if mine's moist, I'm not seeing trikes popping off. But if it's super dry and I'm going to touch it at all, you'll see like little bits of areas of trichomes popping off. So I think it's you're sacrificing just amount the same unless you're doing it like Wing said, he's pulling them off by hand. So he's delicately pulling off fan leaves He's not trimming with scissors, you know? So it's the same. In, the, in my mind, this is just a myth that people haven't really got enough science to back. But if I'm wrong, chat, let me know below in the comment section. I just did my side-by-side more recently, and I was like, damn. I'm always dealing with all these. I hate the leaves that are cocooned over my nugs. And I'm like, ah, pull these off, pull these off. And then I'll get to trimming. And then it's like an angle for doing it versus trimming wet is so easy. Just going around the plant. Like it's like, mm, 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 done, you know? I got a, a gardening myth that uh, does have some science to prove that it uh, is a myth, which is, uh, and I get people to comment, you know, either DM me or leave a comment every once in a while saying that silica shouldn't be used in flowering. And uh, that is one that, uh, that you know, kind of has been debunked. I actually went and did some research to try to figure out where did this even come from? And I even asked some of the more recent people that have uh, pointed this out to me, where did they get this information from? And they pointed me to a forum post from, if I remember correctly, 2009. And <laughs> there was this guy on a forum, I forget what forum, he was on a forum and he was saying uh, in his experience, when he fed silica in flowering, it made the buds more fluffy. And Basically, this is a set of bro signs where one person mentions their experience and that spreads like wildfire. Then all of a sudden you got a ton of different people saying it because Bill on this forum mentioned that that was his experience. So I take it as fact when that is just so false. Silica can be used throughout the entire growth cycle uh, successfully. Don't just take my word for it. Go talk to Dr. Bruce Bugby. He has a hour and 15 minute presentation in Utah State University talking just about silica and the benefits, the long list of benefits, everything from uh, reduce, reduction in lodging, which is like the flopping over the plant resistance of pests. We're not talking about silica in detail in this one, but well, we are talking about that. It's in stash blend. It's in stash blend. Yep. Yeah, it's one of the things that we include in stash blend. But it has so many benefits. It, he, he had to spend an hour and 15 minutes talking about Scylla because there was just so many benefits to it. It's a non-essential element, right? So it's not required for growth, but the amount of benefits that's within it is extensive. Even uh, even so far as uh, zooming into the dry, trichomes with an electron microscope, there is a study, uh, he had actually, he pointed this out, and it showed the difference in structure uh, it was clear visually that you could see a, fed, a plant that was fed silica versus not silica. The structure was a lot more thicker and robust. And I thought that was super, super interesting. Um, and a really good reason to use silica in flowering. And so, uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to mention that one. Not using in silica in flower, that's uh, definitely a gardening myth. Use it throughout the whole growth cycle. It's definitely super, super beneficial. 
Yeah, I think. And it's in Stash Blend. Smashbone.com. The stash discount code. <laughs> Plant additive 215. Message. Silicon, a whole bunch of good things. So, Message. shameless plug. <laughs> uh, another one that I have seen uh, people utilize is, or say is a myth that, well, say can work, is you can use the same nutrients all the way through your whole entire grow. And, well, you may be able to use the same bottles. A lot of people use a three part bottle and they don't have to change it up. You cannot continue to use the same ratio all the way through. And the smoke will tell you this afterwards, especially. Again, heavy nitrogen late in the flower is not going to be tasty at all. You're wasting your nutrients at that point. Not increasing your P and your K is going to be just detrimental overall to that, that big, robust flower growth. When I was younger and growing, when you get something like a miracle Grow, it's a slow release. So it's going to stay the same and maintain the same. That's when you run into situations where it's not going to be the end product that's that is favorable this the smooth smoke the the white burning ash potentially maybe that's more the argument is the maybe that's why people argue that you didn't flush it well is because it was heavy nitrogen still so it's like the bud doesn't burn properly there's like a myth it, for you right there boy it could be a myth <laughs> but like I've, i'd get like the nug that essentially turns into a little black rock in a bowl you know what i'm saying and that's happened before i'm like damn that's just like burns forever it's like but it's super incredibly harsh and i'm choking on it the entire time you can't just keep the same nutrients all the way through. You can keep the same chemicals, I guess, or the same nutrient line, but you got to be able to drop down some of these, you know, at least the nitrogen going into flour. A lot of people try to skimp on, on nutrients as a whole, but it's about how you implement this. That's where, you know, as I don't like a million bottles, Athena has their, their recent bottle lineup that it does have a lot of bottles, but if you follow their program to the T, you'll see why they have so many, you know, bottles to utilize and you get some damn good results. It's just the fact that people think you can just skim through this. I guess organic growing is a little different. The fact that you don't have to change a whole lot up, but you're still going to have to increase your hey, potassium and phosphorus. Going common into the myth out there is that you need an, an entire, or you need a bunch of inputs, a bunch of individual bottles, a bunch of blends, a bunch of stashes, a bunch of bags, a bunch of granulars, a bunch of orients, or a, a, a bunch of um, nutrient. It uh, doesn't matter. The reality is, is that that's a myth. You can actually get a blend where all that's included and you don't have to dive for the individual elements one at a time. Stash blend, baby. And I just want people to think about that because I remember, and, and this is honest, I know it sounds like a little bit of a marketing ploy because it is, but I remember when I was uh, young. When so, I was like seven and yeah, I first I found that. Stash Blend. I was seven. Great I was seven. I was, I was just off the mama's teat and I remember... Uh, looking for solidarity and I found stash blend no the reality is is that I remember when I started and I thought I needed 15 different bottles from any particular line and that was the only way that I was going to be able to grow now I've never grown organic but I know that you can fall into that exact same belief that I, I can't grow great herb unless I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, all fourteen bottles, because that's what grows qual quality product. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. You can do it with two base inputs. Uh, you know, with a, sorry, I shouldn't say two base inputs. You could do it with a, a, a veg input and a f bloom input, and and then the rest, all done with stash blend. So the the myth that you need all of these inputs. Not true. Well, Not, even true. In the Not sense that you don't some, need them, but you, that you, you need to have them in individual form. Well, there's also two-part nutrient lines like uh, Jax, I believe, is another one. And those will have some of your, your macronutrients and micronutrients in both bottles. So you've got a lot of options, too, where you don't need – you just need your essentials in, in a certain case to grow the plant. If it's good enough genetics, it'll be pretty good smoke. The extras will increase certain things, little this, little that, but – it's usually a micro percentage when you, if you're actually testing this stuff in terms of increasing your cannabinoids, overall yield, maybe subjective bud structure. I've seen people who then increase, uh, let's say, certain carbohydrates and maybe notice an increase in some of their trichome production potentially. Like that, that could be something there. But how much that change for your end smoke may not necessarily be enough to add to it. So it is a little bit of a myth that you got to have a full line of everything. In the full top everything, especially with organic soil, you Not can true. add onto it over time. Too much money. Well, you can start with a simple mix, or you can go and get the, uh, like to build a soil 3.0 is a soil that's already pre-blended. You could just start with that, and then once you have enough money, you could add some more things, or you could just go and grab some worm castings. You don't got to do everything at once. It's a big, big common misconception. Yep. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got one that I think is uh, pretty good. I think we touched upon this just really briefly, I think, in one of the past episodes, which was uh, not during the plant actually growing, but after harvesting, right? You've got the drying, curing, uh, and storage, right? So, like, the amount of time that you can actually store it and it be good. Now, often you hear about, oh, yeah, about a week, uh, a year is good, and then it's kind of stale, and you're going to throw it away. Or some people say two years, and uh, trichomes are degraded, brown. and you don't uh, feel any effects off of consuming it. And, yeah, it's brown, yeah, right? So... That's not true, and we know firsthand it's not true. We just shout out to Uncle Mark, Uncle Mark who was four over year here. Old bud, uh, he, he said, "I'm maybe five, he four said. years old, maybe five years," and he was showing us this stuff that was double vacuum sealed that he keeps in a freezer, uh, bed double bagged. You know, the initial freezer bag and that yep. bag uh, and within it. Blocks bags inside of that, and so he does that stores that way, and we we. Sniffed them and looked First at them hand. and consumed them and Dude, they seem like they were pulled a couple weeks fresh. ago. Yeah, it seems super, like literally super fresh. So long term store, you not being able to long term store your final product is a myth. We know it's that it's more conditions. than just one to two years, four, five plus years. I don't know how long you could probably store it and it still be somewhat like new. I guess you can say. You don't right? need a fancy fresh, device. Fresh, you can say. But he had a food sealer. Yeah. Vacuum That's all seal. it was, vacuum seal. And, and the thing is, is having the bags within the bags, I think, is what helped too. Having a little bit of a buffer in between so it's not direct air, cold air touching it. And then also not being exposed to the light. You know, you're not separating your trichomes. This stuff literally seemed fresh, like fresh bud. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't fresh frozen. It was just bud that As was if put it was in, recently yeah. picked up. Yeah, you know? it blew my mind. As I'm going through all of them, I'm like, wow, what the hell? It like, was that great. Old as it hell. was great. Like, some of it doesn't have crazy smell, but I think because it was a little fresh going into Could it. Could have been just the genetic to begin that's with. That's what I think. And that's yeah. what I, and plus, I think that just the bud itself wasn't fully cured when it got put into the process of that. Maybe that has something to do with it, that there's still a little bit of moisture that freezes and maintains, like, freezing your food. I don't know. I can't give you the science on that. But I can sure tell you that if that was four years old, dude, I've seen bud that was six months old at... at a random person I was consulting for, I'll say, and it was worse. Brown, right? dude, yeah, downtown brown. Julie Brown blew my mind. It's so crusty, dry. Mm. It's unbelievable. As were this, I'm like, dude, this shit was sticky and moist, and still it's green color. Yeah, that was that was absolutely baffling to me to see, and it was all of it was. There was none of it that I was like, oh, this is aged, right? You know what I'm saying? There, yeah. None of it. None was of it looked aged. Like, this is old. No, that baffles me even still even saying it. Four years. But it's also not just sitting in a closet that's having ups and downs and spikes of humidity and temperature drops and all these swings in, that are essentially going to ruin your curing process, let alone long-term storage process. You know, I hear people like DJ Short uh, curing for six months before they consume it. Well, it probably has a damn good curing environment. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a lot of it. Curing storage environment, yeah. yeah. And having that dialed in is super important to conserve it. Yeah. I also want to address something that's really important, kind of hits, clo hits close home to me, um, and that's that CalMag doesn't help save your marriage. Oh, shit. <laughs> Everything all right? <laughs> my name is Pigeons, and I suffered from, <sighs> you know, a tough marriage. Tough marriage. Huh? I sprinkled a little CalMag on my wife while she was sleeping. She looks at me like she's never looked at me before. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, boys. Thanks for the time there. I got nothing to add to this conversation. Calmag fixes everything, doesn't Calmag it? Saved but it my has marriage. to be, it has saved to be either military grade, military if you really want to get at it, or <laughs> medical grade. You know, it's two differences. To. You got to know the differences between that those two. That is true. That is true. Uh, well, uh, I've got one that uh, for those who have grown aeroponically. So everyone always told me that I had to have a sterilized, and, and this is a little bit more of a myth. There's actual factual science to back this, but that you needed to, if you're going to do aeroponics or hydroponics, that you need to have a sterilization. It's always got to be sterile, sterilized, sterile, 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 clear as always, clear as always. She's a good woman. Sterile. In the winter, in dirt-ass cold weather, and using uh, ice bottles to chill my my aeroponic cloner, I never ran into bene or beneficial bad bacteria pathogens, pathogens coming up, always vibrant white roots. And that's literally because that's the trade-off of a chiller or sterilization. And so a lot of people stay away from hydroponics because they're like, I don't, I want microbes. I want life. They're not going to thrive in 68 degrees per se water and constant moving uh, uh, the little bit of oxygen exchange that it has. 
but you don't need to sterilize hydroponics. It's not something that you have to go in and, and immediately kill off the life in there. People think that that's killing the flavor, and that's why hydro, which is crazy to me, isn't as tasty. And I think that's just commercial grows that are using rock wool improperly, doing things like that. But you can absolutely just keep your temperature cool and not worry about pathogens or bacteria or any issues like that. I found the path for Jen is... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Chris, you're gonna add some. <laughs> we we tried yeah, yeah. like fifty genetics, man. <laughs> yeah, we're feeling good now. Medicated, right? <laughs> yeah, we're good samples. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Uncle Mark. Thanks, Uncle Mark. <clears throat> oh, Got just No, nonetheless, there's always gonna be myths that are associated with this plant, and I think the reason that we can blame that is because prohibition, um, the lack of education, lack of- the awareness, Thank you. the the just. You, you know, let's even speak, of, uh, not speak, but let's even just touch on, you know, even mainstream platforms like YouTube don't allow us to just perpetuate the accurate information with the site of the plant, the information aside from it, and, and its delivery without without prosecution, without some kind of hindrance or shadow. I don't want to touch on that. You know, prohibition has really suffered or really taken a toll on everyone's ability to find clear and concise information, hone in on that information, because... I'll speak for myself, but I can, I remember still to this day, 15 plus years ago when I started growing and I remember the abundance of information that I tried to find on the internet. And it was, it was really tough. It was really tough because you would find something that said A and then something in B that said A is wrong. You'd find something in C that said both B and A were wrong. You'd find something in D that said C, B and A were wrong. And so it was tough to to be able to, to differentiate between what, what was right and wrong as we start to see the proliferation of legalization and the awareness and more education i, I expect to see these myths exposed in in the same way just remember boys when we talked about autos at the beginning of this epi i i remember this myth i i i, I don't know if i perpetuated it but it was just norm it was just norm. that was a part of your argument is you can't trade autos, autos like that like yeah, yeah autos don't work like this it's just you know that was part of the art you can't train autos don't transplant autos don't just don't mess with them you know that was just the common thing but that it takes one person like you said from the forum one guy said silica didn't work in flowering <laughs> it takes one person to try it in flowering to realize wait that's malarkey busted yeah. So I expect to see these start to change more and more and more and more. Yeah, no, I agree. I got one more myself. Hit me. One more, but you go first. Hit me. Um, Hank might have one, too. I got three questions for you guys. Three questions. All right, he'll bring them. And and I'll be the translator. (coughs) First, real quick, so that you can turn your bud purple with cool temperatures. You may be able to help trigger it. But some flower, and I've done this, man. My headbanger does not turn purple. It doesn't have the anthocyanins. 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 The purple pigment that's... that's Leave her out of this. We spent one night together. Anthocyanins. Cheyenne's a nice tomatoes, woman. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Essentially. So. And so not all cultivars or strains have this as prominent within the cultivars so that you can just trigger it with cool temperatures. You can maybe get some more fade, but your flower isn't guaranteed to turn purple, purple, purple just because you drop the temperature. It can help it. But I know people who will like have plants that look stressed to the nines because they keep going lower and lower in the temperature i'm like listen bud you're down to 59 degrees it should be known at this point it's just it's not getting there now the other one is dark purple establish that it is purple but you really got to do these consistent swings on a regular basis and that could potentially hinder your terpene performance so i don't think that that's the rule of thumb that well just one purple get real cold it's like uh, to an extent there's some to truth an to extent, it. yeah, There's I would argue truth, that but it's in kind my, of a myth. In my climate, the majority of the product I grow is ends up turning purple. But I think there's something. As you said that, actually, I kind of realized maybe it. It's not necessarily the switch to the cold. It's the maybe, progressive. You said it. The swings. The progressive. Maybe it's the swing of going from hot to cold, recovering, going back to or recovering. Uh, but it's not so hot that it's the terpenes are evaporating, and it's not so cold that it's it's hindering the growth of it. In my opinion, and I think that's that's again a little subjective, but I've seen it again firsthand. You walk into a room at Franklin Fields in particular because Matt loved purple bud for some reason, even though he didn't smoke, and you'd see lemon G right next to the first class funk, and the lemon G is vibrant green all the way through. The leaves will have a little bit of purple to it, but the bud itself green. As where the one right next to it, 
as black, purple, and crazy as it gets. But it's because one has more anthocyanins just present in the flower, in the genetics. So it comes out way more vibrant. It just is plant genetics. It's the biology of the plant. You can't, you can't uh, crop steer that too much more than what it already is. Genetics, genetics, genetics. Yes. What do you wink have? Let's, let's, what are your questions? That was one of the things. Swinging temperatures? Is that a... I do. I do think swinging temperatures can, good and bad. I think the bad is, is your terpenes, is the overall production of your cannabinoids, having the, the uh, disruption in steady growth. And this is me just subjectively saying this. All opinion. All opinion. I just think that, that those swings aren't necessarily going to do anything beneficial to anything besides maybe triggering trichome production, potentially because it's a, a defensive mechanism. And maybe even terpenes, honestly, because terpenes are potentially a defensive mechanism. Some that have these smells are supposed to be to get pests yeah. deterred away from them. You know, yep. that's the same thing with the Purpose basil. with function. Yeah. Yep. Other next? Flushing. Existence with function. Flushing. Mm, flushing. Is that a myth? Two weeks before harvest. Do we organic? Organic? No, unnecessary. 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 Unnecessary, unnecessary synthetic. Yep. What if you overfeed? Of course. Towards the end of flowering, of course. then flush. Of course. Okay. Yep, of course. But if you feed normally throughout the, lo- the life cycle. No sign of overfeeding, regular feeding, no issues. Don't flush. Don't flush. You're but if you're wean. not seeing a fade, you want to flush and try to get a fade I, out? I'll wean off. I'll wean, wean off. Okay. I'll wean. I'll listen to the plants, right? And flushing, are we talking running a large amount of water through the medium? Yeah. We're talking about just cutting off nutrients. No. Nope. Like I'm, a flush is a large amount of water through the medium. Because okay. people oh, are spinning definitions right. different ways. Right. So just to clarify. Flushing. Leaching. Yeah. Sorry, I'm saying Leaching wean versus flushing. Weaning off food. So a leaner. Uh, what'd you say? Sorry? Le- leaning or or leaching it leaching. off where you're, de- leaching. Yeah, you're depleting so, the food over time. Yeah, leaching. Yeah. I, if I'm looking at a... Uh, Stash Blend's a prime example of this. If I'm looking Stash at a plant... Com. If I'm looking at a plant week six, she's vibrant, she's beautiful, buds are lush, leaves are, you know, on, on a great on a great trajectory. They still look great. You can see there's a bit of fade on the tips. I'm going to quit feeding I'm to a point, right? Um, watch the, in particular with stash blend, I'm going to allow those microbes to do their thing. And for the last week, couple weeks of flower, that's exactly what we recommend that you do for stash blend is wean off. I, I think we just kind of took, and you guys, I'll give you a second. I, I honestly think like we took the term flushing and we just ran with it yep. because we just thought that that was, okay, no nutrients at the end. How do we get there? Flush it. Unnecessary. I just don't think that's necessary. And I think there's a, a, a significant amount of stu- uh, studies or information to support this. I just think we're getting a little bit confused on when and how to utilize flushing. Go ahead. I think me and Chris look like we're on a team together, like a, a tag team wrestling group. We're on the same color scheme, pretty mm-hmm. much. If you look at the shirt, like how is, how's your green? Army my colors, green? basically. We're the pretty green. Much I green love boys. this color green. Mid boys. Yeah. Me too. I like it. Mid boys. Do we have one there. more? Yeah. What do you Wink. got? Yeah, do, you, you pay attention do you pay attention to, the to like the ash? The color of the ash? It's a great it question. Ooh. I don't. Uh, it no. Ooh. No. Nope. Nope. Don't nope. look at it. Massive myth. You can clip this and ship it, baby. White or black ash to me has nothing to do with how well or how how not well the plant has been flushed. What I can attribute that black ash to, though, is kind of a question moisture. to me. I'm not sure if that's a genetic or if that's just maybe the paper or what is that? I think moisture in the flower. The moisture in the flower. I think an uneven cure. It's not burning Before all the way. Cure. The white, to me, would be like it's burnt through a little bit more. Black would maybe be a little more moisture and not burnt all the way through more, maybe. Or heavy nitrogen. That's that's but where I've had that. Is, quite is, frankly, that's what no. I was saying to before. Quite frankly, I, I just to finish, I, I have not experienced any difference between my own flower because I've flushed and not flushed, and I've had white ash. Have you smoked Miracle Grow Bud? Yeah. Did you notice that the the ash no, was, it was too early on? I can't say it was. Dude, black I or, swear to God, every time I've ever smoked outdoor bud that was grown with Miracle Grow, and I know a lot of people who do it, it's like the you you ash the joint, and it's like there's a ghost joint in there, mm-hmm. like it's a long black piece of a thing, and it's like it's not an ash, it's like a Pompeii victim. You know, straight up, I've hard. The only reason like I'm so volcano. harsh on this is I've straight up taken a plant from har- from the pot, ha- fed it the three days before, chopped it, hung it, smoked yeah, it. Yeah, but fed it the proper white. nutrient regimen. I feel you weren't overfeeding it. Fair, 
No, I don't think so. Uh, maybe I do push things to the limit, but no, I wouldn't. This is all bro. This opinion in bro science. Yeah. Can't wait to hear how this is going. I got one that has some science left, and we can we'll leave end off on this this one. one. We'll leave. We're going to uh, (laughs) we're going to leave you wanting more uh, on this one because I don't have a whole lot of information to give. But I think it's an interesting one that uh, has been refuted. But you still hear about people using carbonated water. You know the benefits of using carbonated water. Tonic water. uh, Yeah, either mixing nutrients into or just using as as their carbonated water, plain water putting into the medium and, and the the benefits that it potentially has on plant growth. And I want to give a shout out to Nick from Rooted Leaf. We had oh, him on the yeah, podcast before, man. man. He got super deep and into carbon and carbon uh, nutrients. he had talked about carbonated water on my podcast. I actually clipped it. And so you could search Garden Talk Clips, carbonated water, and it should pop up there with the uh, episode with Nick. And he's, <laughs> you guys know him, he's, his science on him, it goes way over your head. So it's I can't deep, even begin to really the explain game. the science behind deep. that he broke it. So that's where I'm saying I'm going to leave you guys wanting more. Uh, you might want to check out that clip. But he had a compelling reason why using carbonated water is not beneficial. So... I'll leave it at that. That's Ooh, a great he's conversation. He's bricked up on that one. I want to see that. I didn't know. Brick, baby. Brick, baby. <laughs> okay. That was an incredible conversation, gentlemen. Boys. Uh, a fantastic Canada barbecue supper awaits us. Oh, Bar- barbecue yeah. supper awaits us. We're ending to Shabbos in. with barbecue, Ooh. Dina. Yes. Barbecue. I like this. Myths exposed in the garden. Are, 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 there, are there any myths that you have that you'd oh, like plenty. to share with us in the garden or in the comments below? We want to hear from you. Comments. Because we know there's tons. I think that they're changing every single day. That's what makes this 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 kind of profession, if you will, that we're in so exciting is that it's constantly evolving with the proliferation of legalization and the proliferation of research. We are getting answers that are oh so deserved. Huge shout out to our patrons. Thank you. You helped Thank keep us you going. Guys. Thank yep. you guys Patreon. so much. Patreon.com slash from the stash. We much appreciate your support much so love. much. There has been so many of you guys that have joined recently, and we're just so happy that you Dude, guys. Folks, thank you guys. Unbelievably cool. You guys literally are our number one sponsor. Appreciate you guys making it happen. We focus more on you guys than you realize. We're trying to get better with it. Let us know if you have some feedback to make it even doper. And with that being said, it's your boy Rob from ZOTV, Pigeons 420, Mr. Grow It. We're from the stash. And we'll see you guys next time. See you, Wink. Wink on the ones and twos, baby. Thanks, Wink. Peace on the P's and Q's.